Hey everybody, welcome back to Parsnips and Parsimony. You guys probably have noticed that I have been gone, of course. Those of you who are searching and finding this video on anaplasmosis, you haven't been looking for me. But you probably, for those of my regular viewers, you probably noticed that my content just shockingly stopped for five weeks, six weeks. And this video is going to just talk about why I disappeared how I ended up getting the anaplasmosis and what that looked like for me. Over the past couple weeks when I was diagnosed with the anaplasmosis, I did a lot of research looking for information, looking for other people's stories, and I couldn't find a whole lot. I hope if you are watching this video that this will maybe give you some encouragement, give you some ideas of what you're looking at in terms of recovery, symptoms, things like that. And I'm hoping that this will be a benefit to all of you watching. I want to first say that this is just the treatment that my doctor came up with for me. Sorry, it's rush hour when I'm filming. There's a lot of noise. Hopefully you can hear me over the traffic. My doctor came up with this plan for me. Your treatment plan may look differently than mine, but this is what um, my doctor decided for was best for me. And anything that I'm saying is not medical advice, please consult your own doctor. So I got bit by the tick, as best as we could tell, was the 22nd of June. I was in the car, we were picking up the girls from school, and I looked down and right by my knee was a little black dot and it was super tiny. And I know I hadn't been there very long, maybe at the most 15 minutes. And I went, oh, a tick. We have had so many ticks on us this year, I mean, it's crazy making me itch thinking about it we, we we just we always are having ticks on us not necessarily biting us but just crawling on us I, I live in the outdoors in the summertime 10 12 hours a day so it's not an abnormal thing to find a tick on me and I just took my hands and we were art was driving and I just literally picked it off it was barely it had barely bit me it didn't even leave a mark it was a non-occurrence and we continued on our way uh, that was a Thursday the 22nd um, a week later on the 29th, I had been feeling, feeling great. Not, you know, nothing, no abnormal symptoms, nothing. I took the girls to the library. We had been at the library for an hour and I came out and I had this awful headache. And at that same time, I was working on doing school reports and I was under a lot of stress with that. We had been trying to get our business rental property up and running by a deadline, which was just a few days before this, and I went, oh, I was under so much stress, it was just that stress let down. But it was a different type of headache, and it just felt like this really intense tension headache, like it hurt all over. It wasn't just one place, it was all over. Like my head was being squeezed. You know, I did not take any Tylenol or ibuprofen for it because I know the trajectory of my typical tension headaches and there's really just rest, relaxing, eating well, staying hydrated, and making sure my electrolytes are all in balance and it'll go away. That was about two o'clock in the afternoon. As the afternoon wore on, I, I just felt like chills and like my skin was crawling. Um, I, don't, I don't know how else to describe it. You know when you have a fever and your skin aches and you don't want anybody to touch you? Well, that's how I felt. And I kept saying to the kids, listen, part of mommy's tension migraine, you know, this is one of the side effects. You know, just don't, don't touch mom because it really hurts. And that's not, I don't normally get those when I've had migraines in the past. So that was kind of a new symptom. And then by nighttime, I'm like, this really feels like a fever. But I can't have a fever and I took my temperature but I don't trust this particular thermometer that I have because it's given me false readings in the past and it said 102.5 and I'm like oh yeah right that's not 102.5 but then it stayed sustained at 102.5 for the next 48 hours and I'm like this is really weird really really weird the next day I had the headache on Thursday Friday the next morning I woke up I still had the headache it didn't really change at all I still felt kind of blah and I'm thinking well you know the kids have been sick I probably just picked up a virus you know a 48 hour virus was just let it run its course and I'll feel better in the meantime I continued finishing up the school reports that were due that day and I'm thinking once this gets over I'm gonna feel so much better having the reports done and submitted 
So Friday came and went. I didn't do anything to treat my headache. I just kept going. I did try to take a nap. I felt like I was really tired. Then Saturday morning, I was approaching that 48 hour mark and I still had a fever of 102.5. And then it started, it went up one time I got 102.8. And I'm like, this is not right. This is just really not right. And so I started thinking about what it possibly could be. And my mind did go to a tick-borne illness, primarily because back on May 1st, I had been once again bit by a tick, but it had left me with um, pain and numbness down my arm for a considerable period of time. And so when I got bit by that tick on May 1st, I went, I'm going to write this down in my journal this day because I'm afraid that this is gonna transmit Lyme's disease. It just, I just had that gut feeling. So on that Saturday, I'm starting to Google and look up tick-borne illnesses and I was looking up Lyme's disease, but I, it wasn't really matching up with my symptoms. And so I mentioned to my midwife, I'm still currently breastfeeding. So I mentioned to my midwife, you know, this is what happened. I'm feeling really crummy. I think it's tick-borne. And she wrote back and said, I think you need to go to urgent care and see if, um, they can do a test on you because blood work is really the only way to get tested. And you know, she was telling me what medications I can take while I'm nursing and all of that. As much as I do not like going to urgent care, I'm in the medical system. I do not enjoy being a patient in the system. I knew the way I was feeling I needed to go in. We went into urgent care. I spoke to the PA there and she said, yes, we've been having a lot of tick-borne illnesses. It sounds your symptoms match up, except she goes, it's from a week to 10 days is when they start seeing symptoms. And that would have been that little tiny tick that bit me a week before and not the one in May. So they did all my blood work. They also tested me for COVID. Uh, my blood pressure was elevated. My heart rate was elevated. And I, and my headache, I, it still, it still hurt. And she said, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna medicate the headache because it's gonna take a couple days for this to go away. She gave me a prescription for 100 milligrams of doxycycline and said, you know, it's up to you. You can decide to take it or you can wait until uh, you, the test results come back. But they had to be sent out and it would take a couple days. She goes, really, it's up to you what you wanna do. And then she sent us on our way. No big deal. I went home. I started medicating my headache. Art, at the same time, cracked a tooth and was also not feeling well. He took a nap and he woke up with 102 fever. So I said, there, that's what it is. It's some virus. Art's got it now. It's gonna go through all of us. I said, let's skip the antibiotics because it's gotta be a virus. So fast forward to Sunday, I woke up. I still did not feel well. And at this point I'm thinking, if it was a virus after four days, it should be gone. And it wasn't gone. I said, I think I should start the doxy because I just, I'm not feeling good. And I felt really tired. I felt weepy, very sad. It was just, I was a hot mess. And so Art went, he got the prescription filled, he brought it home and I started my first dose. I think it was either at 9.30 or 10 o'clock in the morning. And then I just rested and I couldn't really sleep. I was, I was tired, but I didn't feel good. And then he came home, he went to church, he came home and I just felt awful. The kids brought me up lunch. I just didn't feel like getting out of bed at that point. I had showered that morning, but then I was just, I was just exhausted. I used my phone for a little while and then I was just, I felt awful. And I will tell you, I felt like I was dying. And I don't say that lightly. I know when my patients tell me they feel like they're dying, we all get a little scared because usually patients have a idea that something's happening. And oh, I should go back and mention that on Saturday after I got home from urgent care, I started having this really weird brown colored pee. Not like super brown, but definitely not normal. And I'm thinking, not, no virus would do this. This is something more severe than than just a virus. So on Sunday, um, the doxy, I was on the doxy for about four or five hours. My fever spiked to 103.5. My heart rate was sitting at about 130. My blood pressure was 50, like 50s over 90s. Um, 
I really, at that point, I didn't care about anything else in life. I felt like I was dying. And I went and fell asleep finally and got up maybe 4.35 o'clock. The fever had finally dropped. I was feeling slightly more human. So at that point, I would say, I feel like the doxy was starting to kick in at that point. Um, but within that six hours of starting the doxy, my stomach started hurting. I started having eye tremors. And I was like, ugh, this is gonna be a long seven days. But I continued with the doxycycline. By Monday, taking my third dose of doxy, the fever was gone. And it wasn't a medicated fever, it was truly gone. And at that point, I never got the fever back. But, so that was my third dose. My fourth dose, I ended up taking at nine o'clock at night. I woke up at three in the morning and I was, I was scratching and I'm like, in my sleep, I'm going, oh, this is the best back scratch I've ever had. And then it all of a sudden, it dawned on me, I bet I'm having an allergic reaction to the doxy. And so three o'clock in the morning, I get up and I have massive, I wish I had taken pictures, massive dinner plate size hives all over my torso, up my back. I had some on my shoulder, my arm. I had some on my ear and I work in EMS. I have seen allergic reactions before. I have never seen hives to the extent that I had them all over my torso. And so I made a phone call to my GP. I told her what was going on. She said, as long as you're not having any respiratory issues, you know, you're not, your throat's not swelling and that's anaphylaxis, you're fine. Just take some Benadryl and don't take any more Doxy and then come in. Now this was the 4th of July. So I had no way to get into a doctor's office and we just stopped the Doxy after the four doses. The following day on Wednesday, July 5th, I went in for a follow-up and my physician had never treated anyone with anaplasmosis. They weren't sure how to totally proceed. They didn't know if four doses of doxy was enough. There was an alternative um, prescription that they could prescribe me, but it was even stronger than the doxy. And they weren't sure if that was a good course of action. My midwife wasn't even concerned because she, I was in contact with her the entire time. What she thought, would be an appropriate treatment for me. So I had this team of medical providers all trying to help come up with the best course of action for me. Considering the reaction, the massive reaction I had to the doxy and the fact that I was at that point fever free for over 48 hours, they left it up to me to how I wanted to proceed. They gave me a couple different options. And so I decided I wanted to wait. I didn't want to take any more medicine. I wanted to wait and see if the fever came back. They were accepting of that decision. They thought that was an appropriate course of action considering the reaction. So all of my medical team was in agreement that was the appropriate course of action. We were just going to wait and see. I never had a rash from the anaplasmosis. The State Department of Health for New York called me and gave me my official diagnosis that morning before I went into the doctor's office. And they had a whole bunch of questions for me to answer because apparently anaplasmosis is not all, not that common. And so they wanted to know if I had fevers and chills and body aches and all those symptoms. My entire medical care team was in agreement that this was probably the best course of action for me. And if the fever came back, I could go on this other drug. I did not want to go on this other drug. And my all my test results for Lyme's came back negative. Everything else came back negative except for the anaplasmosis. We are six weeks, five weeks, five or six weeks out from my official diagnosis and beginning symptoms. And I can tell you, I feel well again. It took about a week, two weeks, to really start feeling like myself. I was really tired. It took a lot out of me, uh, from the fever to um, just all the, I would presume, liver enzyme changes that was, I was experiencing with my urine. Um, it was it was quite the process what i've read i had a somewhat mild case uh, the disease is from what i understand self-limiting so some people will contract anaplasmosis with extremely mild symptoms they won't even seek treatment 
Mine, obviously, were going to a point where it was getting more serious. I'm glad we sought treatment. However, the antibiotics were really rough for me. I am a very sensitive person physically to any type of drugs that I am ever put in my body. And so the doxycycline was really rough on me. But I would say I feel pretty much back to normal. If you're experiencing any of the symptoms that I've shared with you guys and you've been bit by a tick, I would encourage you to go and see your doctor or maybe visit an urgent care and get the blood work uh, because anaplasmosis is no joke and you can die from it in more serious cases. I'm not sure how sick I would have gotten if I hadn't taken the Doxy. The Doxy did what it was supposed to do. It has some really nasty side effects for me, but I know there's a lot of people that take Doxy and they don't have any problems with it. So please don't use my, my experience with Doxy as you shouldn't take it. Just be aware that there are people that have reactions to it and I am one of those people is where I have been the last five or six weeks. The following videos you'll be seeing um, footage after that. You'll notice there's not a lot of footage primarily because I was um, trying to recover from that but I am thankful that for modern medicine I am thankful that there was a treatment option for me and that I am feeling better. So I hope you guys are doing well. Tick bites are no joke. Uh, watch for symptoms, take care of yourself, pick them off, don't let them even bite you, and um, stay safe guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you for next video. Bye.